I can't believe it. I I mean, will we still be able to say no? Of course not. Is it all in vain? Jamal showed up and got on the main. I, I cannot believe it. Jamal Bryant is here for Gabris and Gabrissi. They kids ain't even there. I guess after all of the clowning, he said, let me, let me go on and show up. For what though? I mean, no, of course not. It's not going anywhere. So you showing up is in vain. It's in vain, babe. It's in vain. I I am shocked. But then again, you know he always wants a check and he'll get anything to get some new money and a new birth. So what's our shady moment for the Thanksgiving? Rob's is. She mad at Juan for not having any consideration. Well, honey, you're his roommate, but you want him to think of you as a husband. Or I guess a wife. Well, I guess he still got his job because she talking about him going on a two-game road trip because they mid-season. Child, Juan just as bad as her. He got a pack for some trip. Rob's like, look, he's so particular, I can't help him. You can't help anybody really with anything. Can't help yourself. But he laying down at midnight and got to leave at six and ain't packed to stitch. You know what? You're two lazy peas in a pod. I see why your finances is farted up. So Juan leaves his alarm on snooze all night, waking Rob up every five minutes. And he tell her, look, I'm cool. And she says, well, I'm not. That's what happens when you have a roommate. They don't care that much about you. Oh, Lord. Giselle's moment is her daughter uh, went as her as a celebrity for Spirit Week. Why would she want to dress that tacky, though? Giselle couldn't handle it because her daughter pegged her so accurately. But let's get to Jamal. Let's see how long he sticks around. Is he in the studio or is he doing this interview from his address in your phone? She said, okay, Jamal is a Morehouse grad, the best pastor preacher on the planet. I ain't gonna say I ain't heard him speak a word, but I don't know about the best best because usually the best ain't got kids out of wedlock. But you know, we all human, so I'm gonna let it slide. Yep, he on the phone. You can hear the speaker. Is Jamal coming? No, of course not. The song ain't in vain. So we start asking him random questions like Biggie or Tupac, Fantasia or Yellifer. Child, ask him about his outside chilling. That's what we want to hear about. <laughs> Giselle said, half of my shadiness I get from Jamal. And Rob said, and the other half from your dad. Because your dad was talking about how Jamal had five different babies by eight different women all over town. And I remember. And so does Pepperidge Farm. Oh, but we gone open with the evolution of hateration because Jamal gets hate because he stands firm in his word. No, he gets hate for the outside children, for cheating on his wife, for saying he can lead but don't know where he going. That's what I thought the hate was about. Jamal said, look, if you're going to be in public, you're going to get some hate. If you want to be light, sell ice cream. And me, hell, look at Bluebell when they killed them people with Lestra. Jamal said, haters are people who don't know how to say they love you. And you know, sometimes, sometimes you're right. But when you get on this show, when you cut the fool, I'm just talking about the behavior that was showcased. And I don't love that. Do we love how they treated Wendy? No, that ain't, we don't know how to say we love you. That's, we're telling you you're acting funky and get it, and get it together. Girl, now Giselle gonna say, you know, the hate runs off my back because I've been dealing with Jamal and I remember when his church was starting. No, the hate rolls off your back because you knew your husband was cheating on you for years and so did everybody else. Because you've had to deal with baby mamas and you've dealt with public embarrassment before. Of course the negativity didn't affect him at all because he was still going to get that extra puss. He was like, I ain't going to stop cheating so I'm going to just walk proud with it. You see, there's a difference betwixt hate and public embarrassment. Oh, Jamal's so proud of how Giselle's been handling the hate and the pressure. No, you glad that when she got called out by Monique, is his number 410? You didn't say anything. You just sat there and were embarrassed. You see, because you've dealt with public embarrassment. You've had to deal with outside babies. Proof of infidelity. And more than one. And your child's support was lessened because of those babies. 
So not only did you have to watch another woman scam on your slong, but you got less coin because of it. Mm. Farting up the family, cutting up the coin, I can't. But I don't know if that's something to be proud of, to be walked all over, to be a welcome mat, to be the definition of weak in the dictionary, according to Wendy Osefo. Now, Jamal said, you know, the real hate came from Martin Luther King and Malcolm X and Adam Clayton Powell. All I have to deal with is a blogger. No, all you have to deal with are the consequences of your own actions. Bloggers ain't out here hating on you just to hate. They talking about your affairs. And it's the huzzies that you're humping that are running to the bloggers. Because us bloggers won't talk about you if you ain't got nothing going on. But let's get to his Herschel Walker read. <laughs> oh, God! <laughs> I mean, the Jamal Herschel read was so good, but his, his breath, his, every time he would pop, it was, the breath is hilarious. Oh, so apparently most of the money that was donated to Herschel went to rump. Why am I not surprised? Oh, they talk about co-parenting and co-parenting long distance. Jamal, you are always in the phone. You only want to call away, but you ain't there. It's check parenting, not co-parenting. Oh, Rob asks, how was Gabrissa as a first lady? He said this heifer thought she was a Michelle Obama first lady and would come in giving a Kenya Moore wave to no one. He called her the Black Princess Die? Child, I don't care who tell it. All the heifer talk about what she miss about being married to Jamal Bryant. You must miss a lot because he ain't never there. You don't miss talking to him on the phone, though. What? Jamal used to pick her clothes out? Now I see why she looks like crap. Now we understand these shitty outfits. Are you colorblind? Maybe she colorblind and she don't know it. But now we talking about his zoot suits and pimp outfits from when he was a youth pastor in Detroit. That's when he started wearing gaiters when met Giselle. I ain't surprised she wanted a man in a gaiter. I ain't surprised. So Giselle was throwing away his gaiters and white leather trench coats, but who's throwing away your future frocks? Somebody needs to get them in the garbage. Now, Jamal said Giselle can cook, but she didn't cook till she had chitlins. But now Giselle wants to know what was the best part of being married to her. I imagine the divorce being finalized. He says she's always pushed him to be better. Yeah, because she need them checks. Cha, is she going to send him a shirt to advertise her podcast from the pulpit? Well, that's the shit, so I'm going to see you soon. For Carlos Queen. He might not have come out with nothing this week and I could use the break from that tick tong. My goodness, I don't know how he manages to get spittle through the speaker, but he does. I'd be like, 